Hello. It is I. Hello. Sound it is us. Yes, us. And Kalo Cat. And Kalo Cat. Yes. Holy Night. Which on the Holy Night? Yes. Let's go. Type Moon! Hearing that, Sojuro put away his cleaning equipment and headed upstairs. It was a typical large scale pachinko parlor with two floors. It brought itself on being a local establishment that was satisfied with taking the locals' money little by little without resorting to more exploitative means. But regardless of the parlor's intentions, its customers were not so scrupulous. Among them were casual players, professional gamblers, and cheaters looking to profit by exploiting whatever loopholes they could find. The regular prevalence was a device developed in the mid-80s that could disrupt the machine circuitry from the outside and make it much easier to get what was called a triple seven jackpot. Ooh. As much as the parlor wanted to deny these cheaters entry and needed to present hard evidence of cheating or risk losing customers, particularly in the service industry, innocent until proven guilty was not a rule taken lightly. As a result, they could only punish the customers they caught in the act. Such cheaters were known as Gotoshi, a slice society which Sojiro knew nothing about. What he did know was that they were inconveniencing his employer and violating their rules. He went upstairs. The radio and game machine sounds on the second floor were quieter than the concophony downstairs. There were a hundred game machines on the ground floor and over eighty oh, wow. on the second. Ooh, it's big! But there were some empty seats here and there. It was a solid evening turnout. The machine mentioned by his boss was not such a money aisle. on their hands. Yeah, too many money. The, the dude is getting money. Hacking heat. Sojiro nonchalantly leaned back against the wall and watched the customer hit the jackpot over and over again. Wow, actually cheated. Real cheater moment. <laughs> Woo! Goddamn! Goddamn! You know, maybe it's just like infinite luck. Look at that arch! My god! My god! Oh my god! Uh, oh my god! I worry god. about their back. Oh, bone cue bone! Going to need a bone cue bone! Chiropractor. God damn! God damn! And shoulder pain. Holy shit! And he's not that big. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. To be fair. Yes. It is. Okay. You just have. You're just like really. <laughs> I play Nikkei, you know, it's, so it's just this... normally out of proportion. <laughs> Uh, I play Nikkei, so that's my standards. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that's why I look small to you. <laughs> the second he saw her, his gut told him that she was not cheating. He still was not sure what made someone a master swindler, but if it meant they were special, this woman certainly fit that description. It was almost as if he could feel the luck emanating from her. As the customers looked on, she suddenly turned the handle again and again. She appeared older than Sojiro. She wore a green, form-fitting, one-piece dress. A pair of stockings covered her legs. Her slender legs were gracefully crossed, and her elegant suit ended up hating better than a casino. This bro, my bro Sojuro, he is really going deep. He, I think he's in love. He sees all the important details, what I say. <laughs> <laughs> her dark, reddish hair was cut short in a bob, perfectly framing her stylish yes. spectacles and the crimson lips. New her, character. Her crimson lips... <laughs> Mm, switch to <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's more like you can't see it on the actual image, though. <laughs> that is true. Uh, the truth be told, something was off about this picturesque beauty ring the jackpot over and over again. Four boxes worth of pachinko ball sat at her feet, and her winning streak showed no sign of abating. She looked at bored as her slender porcelain fingers lifted a long cigarette to her lips. Ooh, he knows her. Just as that thought crossed his mind, her gaze turned toward the wall with Sojuro. Uh oh. Donnie, I'm about mommy. to die. <laughs> oh. It went entirely different directions there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to die. Dummy, mommy. <laughs> Suddenly, a chill ran down his spine. He reflexively covered his mouth to keep her. Oh, is he. Was she the girl that he saw like at the end? Like, at, like the story he told? It's like a flamethrower in the. The, the samurai guy? Uh, I guess I guess it could be. It could be. He quickly covered his mouth to keep from shrieking. <laughs> ah! I got him again. Well, okay, question is, is she the one breathing fire or is she the one with the long arms? That's true. Is she Luffy or is she Fire Force? Oh, what you he's restrained? He just started running! <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Thank God! <laughs> I think on pure instinct, Sergio just took off running. He headed straight downstairs, desperate to not be on the same floor as her. He would have run straight out the door before his obligations to his job. 
<laughs> but I'm not. I'm leaving. Bye bye. <laughs> I mean, is is the person upstairs fine though? She is technically winning jackpots over and over again. He tried to keep his composure and he spoke, jamming his school uniform to a paper bag as he ran out the parlor. <gasps> My bro's running. He's, he's literally sprinting. He's he's out of there, bro. He's like, I'm gonna live. I'm living. <laughs> I'm living. <laughs> Cloudy weather brought the shadow of the night over Yashirogi as he ran through the shopping arcade towards the station. He shot up the long staircase he, like an he, arrow. He boards a train, looks behind him, <laughs> she's in the seat behind him. <laughs> Jumps off the train. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the train's only going, you know, 50, you know, 50 miles per hour. You can jump off he that. He can do it. He came from the, 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 you know, the countryside. He shot up the long staircase like an arrow, quickly pulled his train pass from his wallet, and passed through the ticket gate. The ticket gate was crowded with people standing around, walking, talking. The station attended by the Almonic ticket station my machine had an unpleasant look on his face. There was now a familiar comforting hustle and bustle around him. It's another day in the city. Nothing like he witnessed the <laughs> night before. You know, it's just that guy running for his life. Just a normal day. <laughs> yeah, just, just running for his life. He finally breathed again. The momentary rush of relief brought him to a rope stop. He looks behind him, she's like there. He's like, why'd you run away? <laughs> <laughs> he nervous. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is the this is the Doki Doki moment, bro. Doki Doki Literature Club moment when he opens the door. <laughs> he nervously turned around. There was no way that a dangerous individual could be behind him. No possible way. <laughs> It's like, wait, why did I run? Imagine, imagine like, you're playing <laughs> pachinko and you're just like, man, this is a lucky day. And this dude just looks at you and just starts bolting. <laughs> you're like, dude, what? He couldn't think of a good reason for why he'd fled so desperately. As far as she could remember, he hadn't even seen the threat's face long enough to form an opinion about her. Sudro so gave himself a good slap on the cheek to pull himself together and quickly made his way down to the platform. Unfortunately, the next train was 10 minutes away, and panicking would do him no favors. So he could quietly found an empty seat and sat down. Oh no, bro, he's gonna sit next to her or some shoot. It's, it's, it's all over. He took another deep breath. He was surrounded by people waiting for the train, just like he was. No sign of anyone pursuing him. His head finally cleared up, and he reassured himself that he was overthinking things. It's like, wait, did I just like leave my work early? Did I just because like because some lady, you know, <laughs> killed somebody earlier? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. He was surprised at how heavy his shoulders felt. Nah, like he has, he looks at his shoulders like magic, like dead people arms on him, just tracking him. Oh no! I just imagine like. He looks at his shoulders, but sees him, sees her right behind him in the process. <laughs> <laughs> Throws into the path of the train. <laughs> oh god. So Jiro Saida is greater than expected fatigue. He had certainly struggled since coming down from the mountains, but in retrospect, it could have been worse. Physically, he was probably holding up fine. He was much less confident in his mental state. The city and the mountains could not have been more different. Clothes. I love unique fashion clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite store. He had been slow to recognize the differences and adapt. Exclamation was simple enough. Humans were nothing if not adaptable. Even without any effort, one would learn to adjust over time. Recognizing the challenges had been the hard part. <laughs> my guy is just stressed out. He's holding like 10 jobs. Citro so grumbled a complaint he never uttered before. To be honest, he was still afraid to wander around town. There were so many things pe city people took for granted that Sojuro had yet to grasp. It was little wonder that this never-ending chain of surprises would wear on him. We called this before as his mind. Indeed. <laughs> He's trying to explain I it. I don't know. I feel like being mentally... I feel like being fatigued doesn't make you mm. hallucinate, per se. Oh, uh, maybe. Maybe he's from the mountain. He just has early on psychosis. <laughs> on set. Oh, goodness. <laughs> he murdered himself and then shook his head. I wish exists, exists. Such was the way of all things. Tobimaru had called it hallucination, but Sojiro knew what he saw was real. Oh, look at this. 
The city was a uh -oh. magical kingdom. A pair of magic. Gnomes. It was like Disneyland, a magical kingdom. I, I, I just imagine, like, the moment that anybody starts casting spells, he's going to be like, oh, yeah, it's just the city. <laughs> Damn, city's pretty cool. <laughs> there were real magicians secretly living here. That should have been no surprise at all. Thought alone made his legs tremble. It took him a moment longer to realize that they were quivering out of fear. He had feared the unnatural ever since he encountered a wild bear on the mountain path as a child. That was a bear. These are magicians. Sujiro <laughs> <laughs> so smiled a bit as he recalled his traumatic childhood memory. Ah, oh, yes, smiles in the face of his trauma. Anyone would have fainted at the sudden appearance of a growling beast that towered over six feet tall. Whoa, bears get that big? The uh, when yeah. they stand, I guess so, yeah. Oh, man. The monster in the movie that Sojiro saw not two days ago was the equivalent of a cuddly stuffed animal when compared to the wild mountain creatures. It's like watching Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Godzilla seems like something that we should just find in his backyard as a pet. Yeah, it's just a lizard, guy. What are you talking about? <laughs> He was reminded that he faced far worse before. His ordeal now was something he could endure. Oh shoot. It was a catch and limiting him. Oh. He's trying to suppress all the witnesses, I guess. Yes, run. Run, my man. At face value, <laughs> the meaning was obvious. The implications were simply too frightening to contemplate seriously. Perhaps he had misheard the words, or perhaps the speaker had misspoke. What is it? My man is insane. He's going insane. <laughs> Even as he said it, the idea didn't feel quite real. It was hard to imagine that it applied to him. Sotro breathed in and closed his eyes. Where's the police with all their laser guns? <laughs> they should be able to stop them. What? You're not Robocop! <laughs> <laughs> his vision dimmed, pointing the illuminated cityscape out of the side and out of his mind. For now, he resolved to put last night's events behind him. When he opened his eyes, his breathing had calmed. <laughs> he died, and then. You know, I'm surprised he's just now asking that. Yeah, After happened? he describes the situation of her beating up everybody else. He just didn't think to ask that when he when he mentioned it. Nah, see, Toby Morrow had died. She punched him too hard, and then he, you know, she had to make like a doll of him, and then she put Toby Morrow's soul in the doll. So Toby Morrow too. I just reanimate him. Re -animate He's him. not real. He's not real. The question suddenly popped into Sochiro's head. He decided he would ask next time. He stood from his chair. A long streak of light blazed by, and that's in the rival of the next train. And in the train was the lady. <laughs> Yeah, it's a pretty noisy train. Well, actually, no, it's pretty quiet for now. Yeah. yeah pretty much. I got achievement! What time chapter are we at? two! Oh, oh, oh! Chapter! What's our time? 13 minutes. We're still not there. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Nowhere near. That's well, too bad. That's nice. Let's go ahead and see. Sorry, guys. We're going to end the video right now. No, 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 Someone owns the knights. Uh, so, so it belongs to the knight. It belongs to the knights. Alright, let's go ahead and go to the next episode, boys. What does Archive do? Uh, I think it looks at like the CGs and all the stuff you can look back on. Uh, I just imagine like Stay Night where it had uh, the whole like weapon compendium and the all of the data. Uh, I'm pretty sure they, they might. Uh, but but like, there's, no, there's nothing to look at here. There's no servants yet or anything like that. So. What? We have to look at like the 15 question marks. <laughs> okay, we'll see him next time. We'll look at him next time. Let me tell you of the events of yesterday. Okay, finally we see yesterday. An inspired. Yeah. On moonless nights, you must never look back. Was it a lesson? Or was well, it a well, too bad. You can't even see forward on a moonless night. You can only see up. <laughs> <laughs> It was so very long ago. At the time, I could not imagine what I, what my very being would become. One night, it came without warning. I was filled with anxiety, so heightened that it made me want to burst into tears. So, I fled to my grandfather's workshop. On the grandfather I knew, he smiled and kindly placed his hand upon my head. 
Yes, the Red Death follows your every step. Rather than consoling me, he sent me home with only those haunting words. What a horrible Everybody, Everybody around you, everybody you love is going to die. It's your dial. Painful. And your, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. If only if <laughs> your parents wouldn't have divorced, if it wasn't for you, you little shit. <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that night, I was certain that I sensed a shadow lurking behind me. Something or someone watching me from afar. Then, little by little, year by year, it drew closer. Eventually, the presence that once felt like a spot on the horizon grew so close, I could feel its breath down the base of my neck. Of course, it was all in my mind. When I turned around, nobody was there. But that night marked the beginning. In hindsight, I later understood that the indescribable anxiety I felt was the dread of certain death. Was this Sojiro's perspective, or is this... Oh. Uh-oh. Run. I haven't heard this song in forever. <laughs> start running. You start hearing a little girl singing. You start running, bro. You start bolting. <laughs> No, you running. turn around and try to find the girl. That is what you need to do. Yeah, yeah, you turn around and find the girl and then immediately die from the mimic. The girl mimic. Oh, yeah. It's a, I mean, that was, that's what happens every single time you touch Ilya in the, in the previous, and you know, stay night. Oh, yeah, yeah, you just die. <laughs> Instantly. Die. See, this is a good lesson for you, all you Blue Archive fans out there. <laughs> I mean, they do have guns. You'll die. How much time has passed since that night? It lingered deep in the recesses of my mind, where childhood memories are kept. A faded storybook-esque moment. I think, is this, um, Alko's memory, I guess? Um... It only makes sense, because, like, they talk about grandfathers and all this stuff, right? She's a well, but, but he said he was going to recount the events from last night, so what, why wouldn't it be his perspective? That is true. We'll figure it out soon. On dark nights, I still hear that faint echo of my grandfather's words. But no matter how strong the wind may howl, or how entrancing the song of the girl next to me, I can never bury his ominous words completely. Oh. Uh oh. The girl beside me said. Alice's inflectionist voice spoke volumes of her role as the, as the bystander. Uh, I guess I guess it is Alice. Oh. Yeah. That night, there was only me and her. It's a night I would mark as the birth of who I am today. What should have been quite the memorable night. It sure wasn't a promising start. Dense clouds blocked the starlight above the black umbrella. Strong wind towards the sky, carrying the heavy clouds with it. The hands in the clock in the middle of the park point skyward, as if reaching for the moon. Midnight. Damn, bro, she got that drip. A white, a white coat drip. <laughs> Fortunately I mean... for them, <laughs> the night there was no moon to point at. <laughs> the winter air because the sun was out. The sun was out, it's true, it's right. <laughs> the winter air grew fiercer as the night wore on. Inhaling felt as though it would freeze me from the inside. The air chilled me to the bone, threatening to pass out my spine directly to my brain. To prevent my mind from being paralyzed, to prevent my fingertips from becoming stone, I sparked a fire using my internal rhythm and emotion. <laughs> Magic stuff. I huh. spoke to Alice with a nod, and then, for just a moment, I saw the ground. My legs quivered ever so faintly. I told myself, Oh no, the ground is so scary. <laughs> I mustn't look towards the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I told myself they were shaking from the cold, but I wasn't so sure. In reality, they may not have been numbered, numb by the cold, but by fear. I breathed a sigh of relief. My humanity must still be intact. My emotions are still present. What do you sound like? Like, are you like sure a, about that? She, she talks like she's a mimic or something like that. Like, like a, not a human. <laughs> Ooh. Or I can just sink into a pool of my own sentimentality. The sensations from the bounded field flowed from malice into me. A transparent wall covered the entire park. An unrecognizable carpet rooted deep under the earth. She about to fight like a boss monster or something? As Kunoji's chants uh, and most goose fairy tales permeated the night. The sensations became one with my body. Oh shit, the magic circuit. I felt goosebumps on my quivering right arm. Someone had trespassed. Is that Sojiro? She saw. Did she. Does he see her? 
<laughs> I mean, they'll be like, wow, what are you, what is it, what's the city thing you're doing now? Oh, nice. Uh, what technology is that? <laughs> the goosebumps crept up to my right arm like ants. Slowly but surely made inroads from my heart. Pulling back the desire to dry them out, I waited for them to reach a certain definitive position. A moonless night. The park's quaint streetlights were not enough to, fit the, to lift the darkness. The ants came to a stop. Far, far from my right arm, they had reached my very heart. Even without the aid of my senses of sight, I can see the intruder lurking to the darkness. Starboard in the bushes, about 30 steps back on all fours. I was beckoning with his right hand. So it's like a dog, or is that just Sojuro being a dog? <laughs> I mean, he might as well just be a dog at this point. <laughs> oh. The enemy's movement and my perception of it were in lockstep. I spun around. Woo! Long arms! <laughs> oh my huh. god! That doesn't look like a spell. Oh, that's a wait, that's an arm. Gamu gamu beam! The enemy's arm was stretched out like a spear. Woo! This lethal weapon in the back of my head brushed my hair back at speed. With the ominous and awareness granted by Al's sword, I managed to avoid it with the sin of my teeth. What the hell? My hair fanned through the air for the violence of the attack. The strike gazed my cheek and I felt a small, sharp pain. I felt the kiss of death. <laughs> Woo! Bro, my, my bro Sojiro, he was not insane. He's not psychotic. He saw it was real. It was real. Oh no. <laughs> I searched the flow of my body's blood to a different cycle. The blood running to my veins at a very few feet per second transmuted to an imaginary element. My body became a single circuit, and my heart transformed to a completely different engine. Within me stirred a notable motion of immeasurable heat, something mystic yet untapped by humankind that made me who I am. It was the fire of life behind all miracles and fables. It was magic. That's so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it dramatic? It's, all of this was just to say, I feel magic. It's That's magic. That's literally all it was. This is just, it's just magic, man. Just call it magic. What we may just call magical energy. Oh, yes. Come on, the magic words. Connecting. <clears throat> I turned around, standing in my sights, and held up one hand. My, bro, she Mega Man, bro. She about to set that the laser beam. <laughs> the Mega Man beam. What? One-handed? That's horrible for him. The j Easy Mega Man beam. My arm was the agent of my will. My body is a bl my blade. <laughs> oh, no, do not start. Do not. <laughs> my lack of experience meant my magecraft would only be possible with the use of vocalization and gestures. Damn, she's not good enough. She can't use it in her mind. Dang, too bad. She would be a horrible D&D &D character. <laughs> Magical formulae were engraved all over the park. All I had to do was ignite them. I needed to direct the flow of the magical energy within my body to each formula. Math and magic? <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> Those two things do not go together. Oh god. Typically a mage acts as a conduit. Whether wired or wireless. Oh no, that wireless connection. <laughs> my wireless mage connection. You mean, you didn't, you, I think the ethernet would be better. Yeah, it should be used wired. The mage simply pours magical energy into the formula. Releasing this energy in the form of projectile stream, or any number of other methods, would usually suffice. In my case, it was the feeling of my limbs whipping out. Bird. Ooh, Rintosaka, the origins. <laughs> I fought speed with speed. Oh god. Look at that fire. The enemy's arm, extended 10 feet forward, became built from flames. Is that like just like oh, a- Oh, it's just a mannequin. Yeah, like a training puppet, that's what I was thinking. It was nighttime at the park, the scene reminiscent of a campfire, but one in which the center of the flames contained a humanoid figure, wriggling like a shadow puppet. The flames subsided just as naturally as it ignited. No crackling, no burning smell. She just burned a puppet. Wait, she's, wait, she's looting the, the doll? Yeah, she's looting the doll. That's what you gotta do in D&D, &D, D &D, bro. First thing to do, loot, loot the dead body. Roll, roll for investigation. Oh, that's <laughs> 20? Okay, this this doll just is a dragon now, so now it has all these items. It has all the gold you ever need in the world. <laughs> items you... just appear if you roll well. <laughs> Tell what? No out. pockets? Oh, no, it's there. Don't worry yeah, about it's it. It's there, yeah. Just whatever you... Right, Nat 20, you create the story now. You're, you're the dungeon master. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, after a while. After telling this to Alice, I headed towards a motionless figure. I killed it. I killed it. 
I killed it. We gotta say that three times, man. You're you're a psycho. <laughs> you did it. You killed it. Regardless of who my opponent was, you just took someone's life. Oh shit, there's a real person? Oh my god. You killed someone. Oh wait. Oh that's oh, just things oh. just got dark. Oh fast. My god. Oh what the hell? Why did you why did you do that? My throat parched, I swallowed the truth that without this sense of reality, I would have been helpless. So hard and bitter. Possible to swallow, but I tried to anyway. It was unnervingly calm. My heart pounded and my breath felt heavy. My mind was nonetheless calm. At the time I realized it, the charred remains were already in front of me. Racing for a counterattack, I carefully examined the corpse. Everything seemed fine. The body lying slumped to the ground was nothing but ash. But something wasn't right. To begin with, its remains didn't smell organic. Hey, you didn't see like the puppet hands? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like it was fairly obvious. Yeah, we well, could see it right away in the still frame. In the in the, in the one second that took that, that took you like 0.1 seconds. How are we doing on time? 25, 26. Dang, I wanted to leave it off before he saluted the body. It's too, too late. Bad. We have to see where the body is. <laughs> not willing to believe my hunch. Or just like increasing as we get through episodes. We're just like, what time is it? What time? What is the perfect stopping? What is the perfect stopping? <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> we just like, we just look at the time. We're like, oh, it's about to be a perfect stopping point, I feel like. We should just start talking for about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we can probably kill that amount of time doing something random. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's play a game real quick. Let's do a bingo sheet. <laughs> I started doing Watch in the Holy Night bingo. <laughs> I mean, we could probably create a bingo sheet, and we might do well. I don't really know, honestly. Uh, on episode 10, we'll make a bingo sheet. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to believe my hunch. I took a closer look at the corpse's face. And the gritty meme was a featureless white face of mannequin. Get trolled, bro. Uh, get trolled. Yeah, she's just been getting got the past couple of days, huh? <laughs> Screaming, I kicked the mannequin. <laughs> A corpse crumbles of ash disappeared with the wind. No, this was no corpse. This was just a puppet. And for all our efforts to lure the master out, I was been tricked again by familiar. Congrats, you're not a murderer. You should be happy. I know, that's good. My debut. My first town in the open. We postponed for another day. Master, why can't I kill already? Let me kill! <laughs> Next minute, she sees the Sojiro. <gasps> <laughs> well, she sees his back as he sprints for his life, it's like the third time this week. But he, she's he sprinted from like another girl though. So it, did he see like the master then? It, mu it must have been. Uh, I don't know. He, he must have. Saw they never the did explain who that lady was. Oh, she said that is the girl that the woman that he saw yesterday, which was like the day the incident happened. So I'm guessing this is the same incident, right? And so I guess Sojuro knows. Who, the woman who's the true mastermind, then. The, the one who controls the puppets. <laughs> the one who controls the puppets. At that moment, I suddenly noticed something familiar in the corner of my eye. It was Sojuro. He was pooping in the, in the bushes. <laughs> uh, I keep telling him, you know, you can't just make, you know, that compost in the middle of nowhere. You, you have to put that, it in Sojuro. the box. Oh my god, Sojuro. At least bring a bag, buddy. <laughs> At least clean up after yourself. Something seemed strange about the, si the slide on the other end of the park. It appeared as though it was a shadow were larger than it should be. Was I still drunk on the high of the battle? I didn't know you can get drunk on that. <laughs> Took me a second to realize what it was. Oh shit, is that that woman? Calling, uh... <laughs> calling out was a mistake. <laughs> Sorry about my voice, a figure wearing a familiar high school uniform took a step back and then... Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> it was so true. <laughs> What? It can't have been him in the red dress. It's him in the red dress. Who's that? And like he, he's like he's like putting the lipstick on. He's like, <laughs> like a, like he's like face like shock, and he's just running. He's like, oh no, I've been <laughs> spotted. You won't find me cross dressing. Not in this. Not in the eighties. <laughs> not in the nineties of, of Japan. Like someone running for their life. Or should I say, he was doing exactly that. <laughs> go, Sojiro, uh -oh. go. Oh, no. <laughs> In a rush, I shout to my partner, but you must I didn't notice a third party's presence in the first place. Oh, it wasn't as if you can move by myself. Seriously, the fight had taken more on me than I'd like. He's gone. I was trying to try to kill Sojuro. You have magic? You can't even catch one, uh, 
one, one little country man. boy. Yeah, one country boy who just happens to have really fast legs from the country. <laughs> it's <laughs> fast legs from the country, you know. That's who, just the thing they all have. Who survived the bear attack? There was no time for niceties. For us, being seen here was a matter of life and death. <laughs> she up the numbness well, my legs. I made for the park's exit. And that's a good one to stop off right there in this cliffhanger. Yay. <laughs> We're going to head and well, see if... We, well, actually, to be fair, yeah? we do already know what, what happens yeah, yeah. after this. Well, we never know. this is yesterday. That is true. But, you know... She does get away. We might not know if this is actually a redo of the timeline, you know, where she does catch him. Oh, and... yeah, we've already started the multiverse. Why don't, why don't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or like, you know... In this um, timeline, you were caught and killed. In yeah. this one, you somehow saw it, ran away, got caught and killed, and also still survived. Yeah, you know, there's, this this uh, this visual novel has, like, 5,000 different endings, you know, so you never know. <laughs> Actually, I don't know well, how many endings fair, it has. Like, 4, like 4,998 of those are deaths. So, <laughs> like, only, like, two right endings. I mean, I haven't even seen a choice yet. We haven't even got to a choice. <laughs> it's been like two or three Are chapters. Are there choices? I, I bet there are choices. It's like a tight moon game. There should be. Well, because when was the first choice in Stay Night? It was pretty early, I guess, yeah. Really huh? early, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, well, I think you could have chosen between, like, um... Like, uh... I don't remember. Who you were going to talk to or something like that. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Well... I don't think it's a kinetic novel. I don't think it's a kinetic novel. I think it's a visual novel, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, Google. Well, I will Google it off camera. We'll Google it off camera. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you in the next episode of the Holy Night. I do think that we have one more for this session, so... Oh, we're almost done. Uh, <laughs> actually, it's pretty late over here. Oh, God, we're going oh, ahead. Oh, well, we'll see. All right. We'll go ahead and save right now, and we'll see you next time on Witch of the Holy Night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.